Paul and Dongjun, the host of the today's Coopcom conversation. I'm a software engineer in uh, VMware Beijing. Spend 50% of my time working on Hubble or open source project. Uh, Chen Yu, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Chen Yu Zhang. Uh, I'm from VMware and I work for Harbor about one year. I focus on the area of replication, performance, and observability. So, Vadim. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Vadim Bauer. I'm uh, the founder of AT Container Root Tree, where we're using Harbor as our foundation to um, make container management or container image management easier for um, enterprises and uh, SMEs. Today, we will introduce Hubble and its key features. The project update in this year include Hubble new features in 2006 and Hubble 2007 plan. In the end, we will introduce how to participate in our project. Uh, some of you might be unfamiliar with the uh, uh, Hubble. Let's go. Let me quickly go through some of the key features in Hubble. Access control. A uh, user could access resources by different roles, such as system administrators, uh, project admin, maintainer, and developer and guest roles. It is support different authenticator, such as uh, local user management, Active Directory, ADAP, or IDC user management. They also support RoboCon to access Hubble resources. Global account is widely used in the CI/CD pipeline as a service account. The next is the management policy. Admins could set up a retention policy and immutable policies on different projects. It helps the administrator to manage the artifact and storage space. The next is the artifact replication. Now Hub already support most of the public card registries, such as Doc Hub, GCR, ECR, and Azure, uh, ACR, etc. It could help to replicate image from or to list registries, and also can proxy cache list registries. Nowadays, there are more and more concerns on the area of the security. Hub plays in Important role in the security of the cloud native software supply chain. It provides the following features. Sending image feature could help to secure the image from development to production. Make sure the image is coming from the trusted resources, trusted source. Image scan feature could help the user to identify the vulnerability in the artifact. In recent release, we support to export this CV information into a file for download. You will see it in the following demo. Meanwhile, Hubble provides a set of integration feature, such as the authentication with different backend, LDAP or OIDC, and also provide adapter mechanism which allow users to integrate different image scanner. For image replication, there are many adapter could be used to connect to different registry. Webhook event notification makes the event-based integration more easier. It's all the key features in Hubble. In August of this year, we have released uh, Hubble 2006. Let me introduce new feature in this release. The first is the cache layer. We are adding cache layer to improve the performance of high concurrent pull requests. And the second is the RD log push and a, a forward. And then the next is the CVE export feature. And the WebAssembly artifact support. And the last one we backup, uh, I use the last one feature is the backup restore hub with Valero. Meanwhile, we also upgraded some components in 2006. We uh, bumped up the bigger version and uh, upgraded the Angular version in the UI and also bumped up the Golang version to 1.18. And uh, we're compatible with the Docker, v2, Docker Compose v2 version. 
and we bump up the TV and the TV adapter to the latest version. Okay, let's go through these features. First, Cheng Yu, could you please introduce the cast layer and the CVE install feature? Hi, this is the introduction for cache layer in the Harbor 2.6. Uh, firstly, I want to introduce the background. You know, with the development of cloud native related technologies, more and more applications and CICD pipelines being implemented. Harbor as the image registry needs to be able to handle thousands or more requests at one time. And actually, in the real world, the pull requests often more than push. Here, a big challenge is sometimes Harbor needs to handle the high concurrent pulling requests in the same time. Uh, if as an enterprise registry, it's very important to guarantee the performance and availability in any time. Uh, become to the enterprise grade registry is Harbor's goal. So in Harbor 2.6, around the scenario of high concurrent pooling images, we introduce the cache layer, what stores some mostly used resources in the Redis. Uh, from that, Harbor no longer need to query from PG and the distribution uh, when users pulling the image manifest because now they can raise them from Redis directly. So it's faster than before. Uh, okay, this is the uh, background, and enable this feature is very easy. You can just refer to Harbor documentation for more details. Um, next, let's do a quick overview about the performance improvement. Uh, our tests based on the performance of pulling image manifest because our design is around this scenario. Uh, the first diagram is the comparison of response time. The blue uh, bar represents cache disabled, and the green bar represents cache enabled. And the x-axis is the number of the concurrent from 1,000 to 20,000. Uh, the y-axis is the time of response. The time unit is seconds. For example, when the concurrent is 1,000, not enable cache needs about not, nine seconds, but after enable cache, the time is only less than half second. The effect is very obvious. We can see from the diagram when the concurrency less than 8,000 uh, cache enable can improve about 10 to 30 times. And when the concurrency over than 8,000, the improvement can be about uh, three to 10 times. Uh, here, I want to explain why with concurrency increase, the response time of cache disabled have dis decreased from one point. Uh, that is, there are many requests failed fast. Uh, we will discuss this later in the last diagram. Uh, okay, then let's move view to the second diagram. The second diagram is the comparison of the TPS. The TPS means the transaction every second. This metric represents the number of requests that Harbor can handle every second. In the different concurrency, if not enable cache, Harbor can only handle about uh, uh, 600 requests every second. But if enable cache, Harbor can process over 4,000 requests. Uh, the improvement is about seven times. Uh, okay, let's move to the last diagram. Uh, last but not least, the last diagram is the success rate. This metric reflects the availability of Harbor and it's very valuable. From the chart, we can see if not enable cache, the success rate will continue to decrease when the concurrency over than 8,000. But if enable cache, even with the 20,000 concurrency, Harbor can still handle all these requests uh, successfully. But in the same condition, not enable cache will have over half failed requests because the success rate is only uh, 38%. This re result can also reflect the two first two diagrams. The 
the response time and the TPS seems to be better in the 20,000 concurrency. But that's not the truth because the mass failed requests improve the, the average. Um, besides above improvement, the database connection also less than before if enable cache, as well as the CPU usage of the database registry and the call uh, have also have the obvious improvement. Uh, Okay, that's all about cache layer in the Harvard 2.6 and we will continue to improve the performance of Harvard to make it more enterprise. Thank you. The demo for export CVE, it's a new feature introduced in the Harvard 2.6 and this feature can help user export vulnerabilities from project to a CSV file. Here I have one project named library. And in this project, I have pushed two artifacts. One is Redis and one another is Nginx. And I have scanned them before, so you can find some vulnerabilities in the Redis image. And in the Nginx image, uh, we also scanned some vulnerabilities. And then let's go back to the project page. Uh, you just need to click the checkbox before the project name and then click the action and click the export CVE. Uh, there are two sections for uh, set exporting conditions. Uh, one is projects. Currently, we only support export one project for the performance concern, but maybe we will do some improvement and open for more projects. Uh, the next section is filters. Currently, we support four filters in in the project. Uh, the first one is repository. You can specify the repository name of artifact, for example, Nginx or Redis. Also, you can use double star for a fusing match. And the next is tags. You can specify your tag name, for example, v1, v2, and so on. And the next one is labels. You can just choose the labels which attached to your artifacts, for example, dev. And the last filter is CVE ID. You can just uh, input the CVE ID for filter, for example, CVE1234. Uh, then let's keep these filters empty to export all CVEs. Then click the export button. And then you can see the information in the top, trigger exporting CVE successfully. And then you can find the uh, execution from the right sidebar event log. You can see the export CVE job is done and and successfully. So we can download the file by click the icon. Uh, once you download the file, the execution will be cleaned automatically. Then let's open the CSV file. Uh, you can see some columns in the CSV file such as repository, artifact digest, CVE, and package current version, and fixed in version, severity, CWEID, and uh, additional data and uh, scanner name. Um, the additional data is a JSON format column. Uh, because different scanner maybe have different outputs, so we put some custom data uh, in this column. Here, uh, Trivi, we put the CVSS file, a uh, CVSS information in this column. Uh, you can see uh, rep rep repository contain NGX and Redis because we export all but we can just 
uh, export one CVE by specify the CVE ID, for example, we just want to export this CVE. So let's copy it. And then let's input the CVE ID in the CVE ID filter. And then let's export it. Let's wait a moment for the execution ready. Okay, it's done. Uh, then let's download it. Uh, you can see from the CSV file, there is only one CVE uh, in the different package exported in the CSV file. The CVE is with is uh, the ID we input in the filters. Okay, so this is a future for export CVE. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chen Yu. Next item, let me introduce the port and forward audio log. I uh, will share the screen. As we know, the audio log will log image push, pull, and delete operations from previous user feedback in GitHub. In a high concurrent environment, it will log huge amount of audio log in a database and consume disk space. In order to save the disk space, the administrators have to manually delete the list record periodically. In 2006, we introduced a new feature named audio log and uh, purge and forward. It helps to create a job service schedule to purge the audio log. Okay. Let's go through this feature by demo. In Harbor 2006, we introduced a new feature, audio log purge and forward. It helps create our job service schedule to purge the audio log. The previous uh, garbage collection was renamed to clean up. In the clean up section, there are two types, garbage collection and the log rotation. In the log rotation panel, we can select a schedule to purge audio log or run it manually. Also could configure the purge audio log settings. And by default, it will delete all operations and we can schedule it run by weekly and uh, keep a record in last one week. And we can run it with dry run. After draw run, we can check the logs. There are 500,000 of the row will be removed. We can also uncheck the create and delete. That's the uh, delete the pool. And check the logs after we, after the schedule complete. There are only one row of audit log will be removed. Besides the purge feature, we have a configuration to forward the audit log to another log endpoint. It is in the configuration system settings. Let's forward the current log to our syslog service in another VM. And we are going to delete some repositories. We will generate some audio log. Let's 
let's check the audio log in the database. Almost 10 uh, audio log are created because there are 10 tags in the repository. And we can check it in a remote VM. There is a audio log which contains the information. Now we can see there are a lot of audio log generated for repository 100. Now we are going to delete another repository to generate more audit log. There are audit log generated for the project uh, 002. After configured the audio log forward endpoint, then you could skip to write the audio log in database. When this option is enabled, then the audio log is no longer logged in the database table. Uh, let's delete some repository in project 003. It will generate some audio log. Now, the audio log for project 003 are generated. The logs in the Hub UI displays the audio log in the database. Now we can see that there is no audio log for project uh, 03. It means that uh, when we enable to disable write audio log in the database, we cannot find the audio log in the database anymore. This is the feature for push and forward audio log. Another feature I need to share is the WebAssembly artifact support. It is an experimental feature contributed by community. We need to download a tool named Watson to OCI to push WebAssembly artifact to Hubble. Then we first uh, log in to Hubble with Docker login. And then we can use the Watson OCI to push the image to Hubble. Okay, it is pushed. Then we can download. We can check it in the Hubble.
there is a Watson artifact. And we can pull this by Watson to OCI. Yeah, it is already in the local. We can compare it with the pre original one. Sell some. Hello, Watson. And uh, sell some. Test the data. Hello, Watson. They are identical. And we can use the, we can verify it. That's all for the WebAssembly artifact support. The last item, backup restore hub with Valero. Let's check it by demo. We have a hub instance deployed in Azure Kubernetes. And now we put some images in a, into a library project. Before backup, we should make some changes in current environment. First, we should change the Hubble into read-only mode. Second, because we don't have to backup the Redis pod, we should exclude Redis pod PVC and PV by adding labels. Now everything is ready, run a backup command. Once backup complete, we delete the Hubble instance and its PVC. Recover it by Volelo restore.
let's check the recovered harbor instance. Turn off the read only mode. Previous container image is restored. This is all the new features in Harbor 2006. We are planning the Harbor 2007. It's Vadim to talk about the Harbor 2007 plan. Hi, Vadim. Do you please? Hello. Uh, oh, should I share my screen, huh? Yeah. All right. So that's good. Um, wait. Let's take a look what we can expect from Harbor 2.7. And on the agenda for 2.7, we have a, um, a few new uh, features that were highly demanded from our community. And one of the um, big chunk uh, in 2.7 is going to be the job service dashboard, which is an, a new function, completely new functionality that will um, export or expose the metrics that we are currently only expose in Prometheus and that are not actionable. We're going to expose this in the Harbor UI and making them not only visible to the user or administrator, but also actionable. It means that you can overview all the background jobs that are always you know, that growing. So we have which each release, we have more and more background jobs. So you can now monitor the background job. You can see um, what is the queue size, the pool size, and you can kind of predict and manage and act upon the, um, the jobs that are running in the background. So you're able to stop jobs and, and or pause jobs. And then you can see also your queue and predict if uh, some task will be uh, finished at a certain time. So this, this allows the administrator to um, predict the workloads and scale accordingly uh, their their instance. So there's going to be uh, a major improvement in in harbor management for uh, the administrators. The next functionality is also uh, uh, towards the um, management of harbor, and it's about chunk replication. And chunk replication means that. We, when we replicate images from other registries, you know, from ECR or ACR or um, Docker Hub, we currently replicate by layers. So we, we replicate one layer after each other. And if there's an error during the replication, uh, it's going to be retried. And so far, um, this has the problem that if we see, you know, ever growing image layers, you know, for, for Windows, for example, those layers can be uh, easily in one gigabyte of size. And this means that they're going to be often a retry if, if there is an error and to avoid uh, the, the you know, retries and also the queue length, we are going to introduce a chunk replication, which means we can resume, um, resume a failed uh, replication attempt um, at the point where it failed and not the whole layer. And the next step, we're going to also introduce the uh, replication of GCP at factory and uh, replication uh, and, and, you know, other. Uh, thank you, Vadim. You're welcome. Um, okay. Uh, could you please let me share the screen? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Vadim. That's all updated from Harbor project. If you are Harbor developers or users, there are a lot of ways to participate uh, in our project. Welcome to open your issues, pull requests in our project, ask questions in, in our Slack channel, or join in our email groups. Thank you for joining this meeting.